Welcome back again. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to make a project that actually gets downloaded to a real device. Uh, so you're going to need your little green board. Uh, so hopefully you've got one of these that you've picked up. So you're going to need this guy. Uh, you're also going to need from that same tub uh, your programming kit. Uh, hopefully with the red USB cable attached. Uh, if you want you can actually plug that into your computer now. Uh, no, no harm in doing that. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a power supply. So you're going to need some type of power supply uh, with a little barrel connector. Um, if you would like, you can go ahead and plug your power supply in uh, to your green board. It uh, should be extremely obvious how that works. Um, and then um, at least this light should come on. If something else comes on, don't worry about it. But at least this light should come on. So now you've kind of got those things together. Uh, the next thing we're going to need to do is, of course, open up uh, MPLAB X. Uh, what we're going to do, if you've still got your Hello World project open, um, you know, you can close it. Um, so, oh, by the way, it looks like they opened up multiple tabs for me here. One for files, I find that worthless. One for classes, I find that worthless. Um, you can, if you want, uh, leave open your Hello World project. There's no real harm in that. Um, or you can uh, close it as well. Um, I chose to right click on it to close it, but there's a lot of ways to close it. Doesn't really matter if you leave it open or close it. I sometimes like to close it just to clean out this area. Uh, now I'm going to say File, New Project. Uh, again, a standalone project. Um, again, uh, I'm going to type in pick 18F4520. Select it from the list. I think it's silly you have to do that every time. It seems like it should remember. Oh well. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to choose uh, what um, hardware tools you want. Last time we picked the simulator, uh, but this time you can see that we've got a pick kit plugged into our computer. That's, that's why I plugged it in and advanced um, because I wanted to show up in the list here, right? Um, so I say, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the device I want to use. Um, again, this is the compiler I want to use, the C18 compiler. Um, it was smart. It remembered what folder I like to keep things in, so I like that. Um, and I'm going to call this one um, Up Then Toggle. Yeah, I know that's kind of a weird name, uh, but once you see what the program does, um, it'll kind of make more sense. Uh, so Up Then Toggle is going to be the program name. Uh, it'll make the project uh, just like before. Uh, no header files, uh, no source files. Last time what we did uh, was we started typing from scratch, right? So we, we right-clicked and we said, you know, empty file. That's what we did last time. There are actually a bunch of templates you could use. Um, like there's a template for kind of like a, a C main file or generic source or generic header. Um, or there's these C++ files. Um, we're going to use something like that, but we're going to make our own templates. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to visit the course website. Oops, let me minimize this to where it's uh, in the screen a little better. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to visit the course website um, and go to the Courseware tab. So in the Courseware tab of the course website, should have prepared for that a little better, um, you're going to find some files. Um, you're going to find some template files. These template files uh, you're going to save to your computer uh, and then we're going to show you how to use them inside MPLAB X. So step one is to save. I want you to save these four files. Um, so I, I recommend you right click on it and just say save link as. Um, I would organize these so I would put these not just in the downloads area. I would put them into like your your projects area. You can see I've got my hello world from the first video lecture, uh, up them toggle which just got made. Um, and then I'm going to create a new folder just called uh, templates. And I'm going to save into it template.c. I'm also going to save templates uh, with interrupt lcd module uh, .c and lcd module .h. Um, so I mean now if I um, look into that folder um, you can see that I've got my templates area and I've got those four files saved. We're kind of doing some setup work today which is more than we need to do today but it'll make our lives easier in the future. All right, so what I want to do uh, to use these templates, I've got them saved to my computer, that's great, is I want to um, go to Tools, 
uh, templates. And what we're going to do is we're going to save these files as templates um, and then it'll be easier to use them inside MPLAB X. So go to Tools, Templates, and you can see that under C templates right now, uh, there's, there's the defaults that it gave you, so a source file, a main file, and a header. We're going to create some new templates. I know that this is fast, but if you just follow along and do it, it's the only time you'll have to do it. Um, so we're going to add a file. I am disappointed with Windows. They should have remembered where I was at. Um, that's all right. So I want to create, I want to select template.c um, and have that be a source file or a template I can use. I also want to, stupid windows, uh, I also want to add um, templates with interrupts, navigating to that folder. Um, so now I've got two additional ones, template and template with interrupts. I also want to add lcmodule.c. Um, and lcdmodule.h. So I'll go ahead and navigate to mine, lcdmodule.c. We will not use LCD stuff today. Um, I'm just saving it for the day when we do. And lcdmodule.h. Great, so now I've got four new templates um, that I can use anytime I want. Let's use one of them now. So right click um, on source files, hard video lecture I know, um, and what you want is you want to say new file other. Um, once you use something it'll show up in this list, but for now you're going to have to say new file other because you've never used it. Um, and inside the C area you want to use your template file. So um, click next it defaults with a name of new template, uh, which is fine, uh, but I want to rename it up then toggle. I'm going to give it the same name, this up then toggle name, as my project um, because I'm going to only have one file and it just made the most sense to call it the same name as my project. Um, and then for the first time you're going to see what all you got for free inside the template. Um, so really what it did behind the scenes here is it, it took that template.c file, it copied it into your current folder, and it let you rename it, right? So it felt like a lot of fancy mag magic, um, but all it really did is it just um, it took that file and it, it copied it, right, and renamed it. So now I've got inside up then toggle, um, I've got a file called um, up then toggle.c, um, and it just has the contents um, that the, the template had, right? So a lot of fancy stuff to copy and rename a file, I know. Uh, the goal for today is not to learn about code. The goal for today is to learn about the tool. Um, so there's some stuff in here that we'll talk about as we go um, in the class, but not much today. There's some header files. Um, there's some boilerplate code. Boilerplate code just means stuff that isn't going to change. It just has to be in here. So there's some boilerplate code. Um, a way you can define a constant in C. Um, you can use this pound define statement to make constants. Note that there's no semicolon on this line. Um, literally what it does is anytime it sees the word sample, it replaces it with the word 100. Um, some things about functions, which are not the goal of today. Uh, creation of global variables, again, not the goal for today. Um, and then some more, you know, boilerplate type code um, inside main. There is a function to set up the clock to 4 megahertz. Uh, we'll explain that one day. There's setting up the pins as inputs and outputs, uh, which is great. Um, and then uh, that's it. There's, there's this function below that we we're not going to use. So there's a little bit of setup, right? All we want to do is just add something simple. Um, we want to change the LCDs to display something different. Uh, what we're going to do, oops, I meant to say 0B. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the LEDs on here. Uh, the LEDs are on port C, um, and what we want to do is we want to turn on, I don't know, RC0 and RC1. That's our only goal today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
put it in binary, just because binary is easier to read. I say 0B to say, hey, here comes a binary number. Um, and I'm going to set it to um, six zeros. So there are six zeros there. And then two ones. So I say port C equals this. Um, so that's our whole program. Um, our goal is to light up these two. Um, if you hit uh, this magic button for debug and run, um, what it'll do is it will um, start building it. It'll ask you a completely ridiculous question, which you never want to show again. Um, and then if you watch the bottom here, it'll say that it's building it. Um, it might do uh, some other things. Um, oh, <laughs> it says device not found. Um, important step. Um, plug in your pit kit to the board. Let's try it with the plugged in. Um, the, there is an arrow on here, the little arrow that you might be able to see on here, and there's an arrow on their board. Make sure that that arrow lines up um, so that the writing is on kind of the outside. All right, let me try it again with it plugged in. Um, it should have a much better chance of functioning uh, with it actually plugged in. Um, shoot. So I got an error uh, on mine the first time. It said device ID, target ID was zero. Um, hopefully you don't get that. Uh, literally all I did to fix it is I unplugged it, um, like I unplugged it from here and I replugged it and I fixed it. Um, all right, so moral of the story is my two lights came on. Yay! Um, if you wanted to make a small change, you could stop this program uh, and you could change the value. Also, just to mention it, I put it in the loop area there uh, but you don't have to. Uh, you could put it before the loop um, because we only really need it to run once. Uh, just for giggles, instead of two ones, um, I'll put in four um, and I'll program it again. Um, and what it should do is it should program it um, and turn on four of the LEDs. Uh, so now it's programming it, and there it runs, now it has four LEDs. End of this video lecture. Um, so the goal was just to get some program to download. Um, I know it was a tough one. Um, if you had problems, uh, don't don't panic. <laughs> um, see if you can fix them on your own. But if you um, spend more than, say, 20 minutes on it, just stop. We'll help you in class tomorrow. be really easy for us to help you. Um, but I just wanted you to try it on your own first. All right, see you next time to do a little bit more uh, building on the same program. See you then.